I'm Laura Podesta in New York with details on the ICE raids the Trump administration promised would happen this weekend and what's expected in the coming days. And did you notice the lightning during this weekend storms? You might be surprised by just how many lightning strikes there were. Coming up, an early look at the season's wildfire outlook. Just ahead of 6 o'clock on this uh, Monday, uh, 6.30 I should say, uh, Chet Lehman with you here. Missy O'Malley is off today. Matt Elwell does have our local forecast in a moment. Meantime, our top story this half hour, a wide-scale federal immigration crackdown did not materialize as expected over the weekend, but it may have gotten underway in a less conspicuous manner. Laura Podesta reports this morning from New York. The nationwide crackdown on illegal immigration promised by the White House did not begin as expected this weekend. They're going to take people out and they're going to bring them back to their countries or they're going to take criminals out, put them in prison or put them in prison in the countries they came from. But there have been few reports of unusual activity by immigration agents. That could soon change. The New York Times says instead of one massive simultaneous sweep, the ICE operation is being carried out as a series of smaller raids spread out over several days. The acting head of Customs and Border Protection said his agency is just doing its job. The individuals that ICE goes after, uh, and they do this every single day, are not individuals that are here undocumented. They're individuals that are here illegally. Many Democrats have criticized the Trump administration's handling of the situation. There are a lot of families in our country that are mixed or blended families. We're in that household. There are documented immigrants. There are undocumented immigrants. There are people who have visas. And they're living in abject fear. About 2,000 people are believed to be targeted by the raids. The White House says each has been issued a final order of removal from an immigration judge. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Laura tells us the ICE operations were expected to occur in at least 10 cities. Officials in a number of those communities uh, limited immigration agents' access to local police databases and took other measures to shield migrants from federal raids. That's a story we're going to continue to follow here, Matt. Yep. 6.30, uh, thunder, lightning in the overnight hours, hail, wind, rain. Oh, man, it's been a crazy weekend. Cloud, pick There's a little all bit kind of everything. Yeah, and it looks like today's going to be kind of a repeat performance mm. with the potential of some showers and thunderstorms, mm. maybe some small, moderate hail. Possible once again today. Temperatures into the 50s right now. Uh, really fairly quiet start to the day. And at this point, the clouds are building into the afternoon. Good chance for some afternoon thunder showers. And again, small to moderate hail are biggest concerns, at least at this point. We will, of course, break down your complete forecast. We'll also talk about the weekend ahead coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 631. Matt was kind of talking about it. We've been dealing with it recently. We've had many afternoon storms here in southwest Montana across the state. Those storms have brought plenty of thunder and lightning uh, that can spark wildfires. MTN recently spoke with Ryan Leach, a meteorolo meteorologist with the National Weather Service, to talk about these storms. So we've had a lot of thunderstorms move through the area in the last 36 hours. Um, we've had about uh, 300 lightning strikes in the Missoula and Bitterroot Valley in that time period, um, upwards of 400 in the uh, uh, Flathead and the Mission Valleys. And if you look at southwest Montana from the Big Hole Valley down to Dillon in that area, we've had uh, 1,100 lightning strikes in the last 36 hours roughly. Those numbers Leach describes are all uh, cloud to ground lightning strikes. Leach has been working with the National Weather Service for more than 10 years. He says this is a bit higher than we have seen in most recent years. Even though lightning is known to start fires, we may have some room to breathe, at least for now. Uh, also, by the way, at uh, this uh, moisture, of course, that we're getting from some of these uh, uh, storms has kept the plant life uh, much more damp. And that, of course, is making it less likely for those lightning strikes to actually start a fire. In other news this morning, this week during a speech about his administration's record on the environment, a record that has not been without a share of criticism, President Trump spent some time talking about forest fires and what can be done better to keep them in check. In December, I signed a historic executive order promoting much more active forest management to prevent catastrophic wildfires like those that recently devastated California and Oregon. Wildfires like those and the ones we've seen here in Montana continue to burn up large chunk of Forest Service budget, a budget the Trump administration has pro proposed 
uh, cutting by $948 million for fiscal year 2020. Climate change has been blamed for the increasing number of devastating fires in recent years. The words the president did not mention, however, he did talk a lot about forest management. And the process of cleaning is now really taking precedent. It, a lot of people are looking at forest management. It's a word that people didn't understand last year, and now they're getting it. And you don't have to have any forests, uh, fires. It. He talked a lot about forest management. Either we are going to manage our forests, or our forests are going to manage us. We've got to deal with the wildfire situation that we have, and we can reduce the risk of wildfires and severity of those wildfires by better forest management practices. Now, we also heard from Montana's other U.S. Senator, a Democrat John Tester, who responded in a statement saying he supports active forest management and believes that it is an important piece of maintaining our healthy forests and local jobs. Senator Tester says that needs to be coupled with habitat conservation, improved public access, and a comprehensive approach to what he calls the underlying cause of wildfires, which he believes is climate change. Also, this month's waiting child is a 12-year-old Nathaniel from Missoula. He's a fun-loving, outdoorsy kid looking for a family to explore with. Dance Katie Miller introduces us to him. Hello. Probably one of the most favorite things is to do is hang out with family. Nathaniel wants a family that is adventurous and loving. I probably like someone who's athletic, he likes to do bad things, and probably have a ranch to ride horses and stuff. Yeah and someone who likes to go exploring. I'm an exploratory person. He likes hiking and anything active that you can do outside. I practically do anything. But horseback riding is his favorite hobby. I like to control horses and I would go feel the wind when they go. So I just like to feel when they start running, you kind of hop up. <laughs> yeah, that's the fun part. <laughs> Nathaniel got separated from his four brothers and he says it's been hard but he hopes his new family will help him see them. I'd rather see them than not see them at all. Nathaniel also likes trying new sports, like wrestling. I don't do it to win, unless you do it just to have fun. And he spends a lot of time swimming. Yeah, I just like feel the nice feeling of the water. He wants to be adopted by someone that lives in the mountains and likes trying new things. Someone who likes to do archery and hunting. So I won't get into that stuff. And he says some siblings might be nice. Oh, my one or two kids. I mean, I, I love horseback, buddy. <laughs> In Missoula, Katie Miller, MTN News. Now, for more information about adopting in Montana, you can call the Department of Health and Human Services at 866-9-FOSTER. Shifting gears now, this week under the big sky, we take a look back at Live from the Divide, our Emmy award-winning feature on a small music venue in Bozeman. Jason Wickens, Doc Wiley share a passion for music and the American songwriter. This shared passion led to the duo to create a live music venue that breaks down the barrier between the audience and the artist. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. Grew up in Winifred, Montana. My folks are ranchers. When I left high school, I knew I wanted to do music, but I had no idea how I was going to get there. I went to audio engineering school down in Arizona. I was uh, farm fresh. I didn't know how to hook up a VCR. <laughs> so After I finished school, I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I knew I wanted to be back in Montana. I really didn't intend on having like a commercial studio, having a place. A friend of mine who was in uh, the space we're in now called me and he said, I'm leaving. Do you have any interest in this? I, I kind of took that phone call as, as a sign, and I had just met Doc. Everything was really kind of coming together in a way that I couldn't, I didn't want to ignore. I was terrified <laughs> and had no idea what, what was going to happen. I was booking songwriters to play the front room, which wasn't a venue. It was kind of just house concerts. It was very loose. Doc said, I'm going to record this night. It was Mike Beck, pretty well-known Western cowboy troubadour. From that first recording of Mike Beck, we really did. We created the entire format of what the next 315 acts were going to try to follow.
live from the divide under the big sky. You can check out that full live from the divide story, all of our current stories online at underthebigsky.com. We're going to take a quick break. Here's